What's up, everybody? Welcome to the latest episode of Games Up Podcast. My name is Cameron McCulloch Keeble, and hopefully, you know me as a third of one third of the hosts of this show. Uh, welcome to a very special episode for Games Up Podcast, and in fact, welcome to a very special month for Games Up Podcast. I would like to welcome you uh, to our EGX Indie Mega Extravaganza Month thing. We just got back from the show floor of EGX, uh, where we played some huge name games, some massive AAA stuff, some of the stuff that we're really excited about. But our favourite bit of the show, as with every year, was the indie section. The indie mega booth and the indie booths, where you have creators stood with their games, inviting you to play, inviting you to talk for all day long. Um, and it's a joyous place to be. So as with every year, we took our equipment round and we went and interviewed some of our favourite games that we played in the Indie Mega Booth. So for the next month, every week for the next month, we're going to put out an episode uh, where we present to you a couple of the interviews that we did on the show floor with some of the most unique, interesting games we could find at EGX. Uh, this week, we're joined by Unbox, by Prospect Games, and Pollen, by Minefield Games. Uh, so without further ado, this is Unbox. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show, and I am joined, uh, I'll let you introduce yourself, actually. Hi, I'm uh, Matt Griffin, I'm uh, one of the developers for Unbox. Awesome. Uh, so, tell us about Unbox. What, what is Unbox? Uh, Unbox is about the, uh, the ultimate postal service. It's self-delivering cardboard boxes, where the player plays as a cardboard box. And uh, you're going to have to trust me on this one, it's a lot more fun than it sounds. <laughs> uh, we've got a single-player module, which is a big, which are big massive worlds to explore and challenges to complete. And then uh, we've got mul lo local multiplayer, which uh, consists of five different game modes. We've got racing, death matches, uh, collect modes, uh, kind of a King of the Hill style mode where you've got to hang on to a safe for as long as you can. And then a, a thief mode where whenever a player gets shot, they lose a percentage of their coins. And a lot of people enjoy that because there's a lot of stuff to do in that one. That's, awesome. It's all very hectic and frenetic. And a so lot of fun. Uh, what part of the development process uh, do you take part in? What's your... Uh, I'm part? the audio guy. So okay. I'm, I'm taking charge of uh, sound design and music. Okay, so uh, how did the idea for the game come about? Where's the, uh, what's its story? Well, the guys in December last year were doing a game jam for the Unreal Engine, okay. and um, our designer Jack came up with this kind of weird mechanic where it was a box that could unbox itself and do a super jump, and it, originally it was kind of stacking on top of each other, and then we refined it a little bit and thought, well, this is, this is really fun, and it's just steadily got more and more out of hand since then, <laughs> and now here we are today with... That's fantastic. This crazy, massive single-player worlds and a, a full, fully-fledged local multiplayer mode. So how do you, as an audio person, approach a premise like a self-delivering postal service? <laughs> um, at first, uh, it, was a bit, it was a bit confusing. I didn't really know what to do for it. But uh, obviously, my first thing was to go into a recording studio and throw a cardboard box at the floor lots of different times. Actually, right, lots okay. of different sized cardboard boxes at lots of different floors. And then I kind of went from there. Um, but aside from that, you've got lots of fireworks, lots of explosions, and lots of um, uh, a lot of the games set across lots of different environments. So I've got a I've got a lot lot on my hands. And are there any like specific challenges that you've encountered with this game that you haven't with others? Um, I'd say the physics. It's it's a physics-based platformer, and um, a lot of sound designers are used to working with kind of animations, right. which is um, which is nice. You kind of say, okay, on frame 35, we'll make we'll trigger this sound, but this. Um, you, you've got to consider a lot more. You've got to consider every eventuality that the player can come up with. Okay. Um, knocking so over various size objects at different speeds and velocities and what the objects going to collide with. But it's a lot of fun. I'm learning a lot in the process. That's awesome. So um, wh what kind of platforms you would you guys like to see the game come to eventually? Well, um, eventually we'd like it on everything. But at the moment, we're focusing on, um, we're focusing on PC. And okay. then we can't confirm or deny anything console-wise. But obviously... Especially with the local multiplayer, it'd be a great kind of couch-based game for four, four friends. Mm -hmm. So we'd, we'd hope that we can get onto consoles in the future. Awesome. Um, you have a poster in front of us here that obviously the ladies and gentlemen can't see through <laughs> yeah. hearing um, that says you're on Greenlight. Um, yes, we are. What was, the, was there a reason to choose Greenlight over any other path? Was it, did it feel like the right choice for you guys specifically? Um, yeah, it just, uh, it, yeah. Uh, Greenlight's a great platform if you don't have a publisher, and it's, it's a good time to get some, some early feedback on the game of what people think of the game, and it's been overwhelmingly positive so far. So we're really happy with the way the campaign's going, and we, can hope, we hope we can get Greenlight sometime soon. Awesome. Um, and if, if that does happen, all, all fingers crossed and all that, um, how, when do you hope that we'll get to see the game? Um, we're looking at a May release next year. Oh, okay, awesome. So, so um, We've still got a long way to go with the single player. but. Okay, so considering it's a May release, is it a bit odd then putting it out on a... A big stand like this with loads of people picking it up and 
Like, is it weird to take it from the studio to just all of the public at once, as it were? Um, yeah, it is, but it's, it's, it's a lot of fun seeing everyone play the game and seeing how people react to it. I had a guy earlier who just couldn't stop laughing once he started moving the box, and that was just awesome to see. Like, That's fantastic. Um, is there anything else you think we should know about it? Anything you want to add? Um, no, just uh, vote for us on Greenlight. You can follow us at, at Unbox the Game. And um, Google Prospect Games or Unbox Game, and you'll uh, you'll find us. Was that Prospect Games? Prospect Games. Prospect That's the Games. Name of the Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Oh, uh, thank you for having me. Good luck on Greenlight, and we'll uh, we hope to see you in May, I guess. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks. very much. So that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, was Unbox by Prospect Games, which has now been greenlit, uh, and you can find it in the description below. There's a link to all the uh, to the Steam Store page and all that kind of jazz. Uh, and the next interview we have up for you this week is Pollen by Minefield Games. Now, Pollen really interested me when I saw it as I walked past. Uh, it's a first-person exploration game, but as the developer li will explain in the interview, it's set in an alternative universe where the human race has started to explore and mine in space by 1995 because of various reasons. So it's a really interesting idea. Uh, it's a really interesting way to tell the story, and its use of VR was really clever. So I'll uh, I'll let the interview go into your ear holes. This uh, is Pollen. What's up, everybody? We are still here on the EGX show floor. In fact, we're here on the Indie Mega Booth, uh, and I am joined by Vilki Vista. Yes. Hey, I got it right. Uh, from Minefield Games, uh, and you're showing off Pollen. So, uh, Pollen is a first-person exploration game? Yes. Um, tell us about the story. What, it, what are you exploring in this? Uh, well, the story begins is that there has been a work-related accident on Rama Industries Research Space M on Titan. And that, uh, that leaves an open position for a player to apply. And it's a player who is the lucky one to get actually the job as it's sent to the Titan. Cool. Um, so you told me previously off air that this is a this is like alternative universe. Yes. So so it's a universe where uh, Kennedy was never killed, but instead uh, survived the uh, assassination attempt, and so the space race continued, and that's why uh, the human race has been able to travel on Titan in 1995. So, like, set in 1995, obviously, technology and culture and those kind of things are going to be different. How do you go about making that clear in the game? Well, it's like uh, the player can quite soon notice that uh, computer technology isn't a as advanced. And there are some, you know, references uh, to news and, and world events that has happened. And, you know, that, that's, the, that's how we tell the player about the world. And did that cause you like a problem when you were developing the game, having those like time-based limitations, like of what you could show and use? No, it actually gave us an sort of like an inspiration, and it set us free to you know uh, to actually make up the story and, mm -hmm. and you know create events that had happened to uh, to uh, Roma Industries base here. So how did you decide 1995? What was it about that year that? Uh uh, it was how we realized that that will be the year when these events happen in the universe. Okay, so you it's know. very specifically chosen. Yes. Awesome. Um, so what's your job in the development of the game? Uh, I'm a CEO and co-founder of Mindfield Games, but okay. I'm also a tech programmer. So I'm responsible for uh, games uh, graphics technology. Oh, awesome. Okay. And the, gra the game does look really fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, how long have you been developing it for? We've been working on it for a bit over two years now. And we have about uh, six months to go. So okay. the game is set to release on uh, PC early next year. Awesome. Um, and now I'm watching a gentleman in front of me play on the Oculus. Um, what is it about VR that made you, that drew you towards using that platform? Well, it's like uh, VR is so great platform to actually put the player in the middle of the events and actions that happen. So, so with VR devices, we're actually able to put the player as a main character in the story. So mm -hmm. that's really great. And have you worked with other uh, VR devices other than Oculus? Yes, we want the game to be playable on pretty much every VR device there are, uh, like Oculus Vive, OSVR, PlayStation VR, and so forth. Awesome. Um, and do you think that it'll come to platforms other than PC? Uh, yes, we will release for PlayStation 4 later on. Oh, fantastic. Is that like confirmed or is that...? Uh, it's confirmed, yeah. Fantastic. Awesome. So. Um, well, is there anything else you think we should know about the game? Uh, well, nothing else except please play it. <laughs> please play it, fair enough. Uh, when did you say it would be out? Uh, early next year. Early next year. And sorry, where are you guys based? Where's Minefield based? Uh, we are based in Helsinki, Finland. So this has been a long trip then? Yeah. 
Has it been good? Yes. It's a good EGX. Yeah, it's uh, great to get uh, all the feedback, which has been mostly positive. So Good, okay. good, fantastic. Um, well, we need to let you go because you have to catch a train home in like yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah. So thank you very much for joining us. Uh, good luck with the game. It looks fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and that was uh, Pollen by Minefield Games. Cheers, guys. So that was Pollen by Minefield Games. Uh, we want to say a massive thank you to both of the developers this week for joining us and allowing us to interview them, and we wish them the best of luck with their games. We're going to have another episode of the Indie X Travaganza Month Week thing next week, uh, where we'll have two more really interesting games for you to listen and learn about um, and hopefully play. Thanks very much for joining us, and until next week of the Indie Extravaganza Month, the game's up. <laughs>